So five years ago, I started a long-term life test on this filament LED light bulb. It's now about April of 2020, and as you can see, it's no longer producing light. So it worked for over 43,000 hours, which is a decent life indeed. Let's tear it down and see what caused it to fail. So here's the bulb that the film's course in the glass envelope portion, and then hidden in the uh, metal base uh, will be the power supply. And uh, if you just take a close look at the filaments, there doesn't seem to be anything visually wrong with them, so I suspect a problem will be in the power supply. But our first step here is uh, to remove the uh, glass envelope. Uh, I just smashed it uh, against my anvil. Okay, so the uh, power supply is in the base, and it actually has two outputs that goes up and that connect to the filaments. I've got it connected to a meter here and obviously a power socket, and I can turn it on. And uh, you can see the voltage remains at zero. And uh, if I keep on clicking it, it just seems to be dead. So looks like the failure on this bulb is going to be the power supply section. So here's the uh, circuit board and, of course, the A base, and then it went off into the filaments, uh, two power leads. Um, on this side, you can see uh, there is a full wave bridge rectifier under control IC. Nicely conformally coated. This was really a quality bulb. Uh, if we flip it over though, almost certainly the suspect component uh, shows up. Uh, there's an electrolytic capacitor here. If you look closely, uh, it's bulging on this end, which is almost always a certain sign of an electrolytic that's gone bad. I'll just insert a still picture here. You can see that. Let's uh, measure that capacitor and uh, see if it's uh, way off its value. I suspect it's going to be, and uh, that's probably what caused the assembly to fail. So it's marked as a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, but the uh, meter I have uh, just seems quite confused. It uh, varies between overload and uh, 0.04 microfarads, which is one hundredth of the value it's supposed to be. So something's uh, very wonky going on with this capacitor. So let's look at the assembly a little bit further, and uh, not only do we have a capacitor which is no longer having the right value, uh, but there's a fusible link or fuse in this assembly. It is circled up there in this photograph. And uh, it's actually opened, so uh, we'll bypass that and uh, see if we can get the power supply working. Okay, so I've bypassed the uh, fuse that had opened up, and you can see I put a new capacitor on the assembly, uh, because the other one was definitely demonstrating it. Uh, it was no longer the capacitance uh, it should be. Uh, I've got the uh, 1 mega ohm resistor here to uh, just provide a little bit of load, because you can see I've knocked off the LEDs as part of taking it apart. Uh, on DC voltage here, if I turn it on, I expect now we'll get an output. And sure enough, uh, quite high actually, 700 volts. That seems a little bit too high actually, maybe the load. I put a 1 mega ohm resistor on, maybe a little bit uh, too little of a load. I don't think they have that many LEDs in series. But uh, as kind of expected, this assembly probably failed because the electrolytic capacitor dried out and then eventually the fuse opened up. Uh, and that was it for this bulb. So uh, unfortunately, uh, that is the failure point of almost every bulb I've torn down. It's always a capacitor uh, failing, uh, never the LEDs.